Hi, this is Jim Sinesco for AFC International, and today I want to talk to you about detector tubes. Yep, color metric detector tubes that have been around since, gosh, way past early 1900s using the coal mines and, and mining industry. But um, do they still serve a purpose in today's gas detection air monitoring matrix? And I would say absolutely yes, probably more than ever before detector tubes are used. And uh, I am happy to announce that we are now a Unifis detector tube distributor. And we also, we've always been a gas tech uh, detector tube, two different type companies. And we also have Ray Systems as well. So we have lots of different choices. Um, if you've got a Draeger hand pump and a Draeger tube system, uh, we're saying no to Draeger anymore. We're not, we don't want to have Draeger. Draeger, you know what, we move on. But we will give you a full trade out one-to-one, -one, a brand new Unifis or syringe type uh, gas tech uh, pump, one for one for a order of 10 boxes or more. So we will work with you to trade out. And what's interesting about the Unifis, and especially this, this quick draw pump, is it uses the same diameter tubes as the Draeger system did. So if you're using an Akiro and you're using those types of tubes, there's not gonna be a whole lot of difference. As a matter of fact, these tubes are actually designed and manufactured in Germany at a plant, our company, which is right down the road from Draeger. So that technology is not secret to Draeger, but it's been out there for others to use. And our, I think, uh, has got a really good system. You may remember our tubes being what MSA sold for years. MSA sold our tubes. Uh, they got away from it. A company called Unifis bought the rights to the tubes and now they're making the detector tubes themselves. So how it works is, uh, and you're all familiar with the tubes if you're not, how it works is we take a detector tube and that detector tube is for a specific gas. Now this one I have in my hand is for carbon dioxide and we have carbon dioxide in the air so I should be able to get a reading on this but the way it works is there's an, an n equals number on this tube. Have n equals one and n equals five. Well the n equals how equals how many pumps I'm going to administer to the pump uh, for this tube. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and break the CO2 tube, break one end of it, break the opposite end, all detector tubes, just like the Draeger, have an arrow, which means that's the direction we're going to go ahead and point it into the pump. Now this quick draw makes it easy. It's actually a one-handed operation, whereas the Draeger was difficult for small hands to compress. And sometimes it hurts your hand. You couldn't always get a 100% pump. The quick draw is really simple. It's kind of like a syringe. All I have to do is compress and release. And you'll notice the end of flow indicator, this is big yellow eye, very easy to see when, when, when that pump is completely pulled that sample through. So what's happening here is because of the reagent chemistry, it's cr creating a little bit of a, uh, uh, a, a backflow issue. So when we compress, it takes time for the billows to open up. And you can start to see I've already got a color stain going on, but I'm gonna go ahead and do another four more pumps. There's number two. And again, there's our end of flow indicator. The end of flow indicator lets me know once the pressures have equalized, meaning I pulled in a hundred milliliter sample through that tube. There's number two, doing number three. And with all detector tubes, you wanna use all the uh, N equals number or the number of pump strokes for each tube before we make a determination or read that tube. So it's very important. I'm gonna do one more. And you can see clearly that white chemistry now turning purple. And that is the hit that you would get for CO2 in the air. And I think I have one more pump stroke I'm, I'm gonna do. This will make a total of five. Now I'm gonna go ahead and cheat a little bit. I'm gonna exhale, because we exhale CO2. I'm spiking it just for the, the purpose of the video. So you can actually see that color stain. And it's very, very remarkable. Our end of flow is now finished. Uh, the quick draw, a phenomenal pump, well built, heavy, strong. Uh, I just love that indicator. Uh, it gives you the ability to see when that flow is finished. Now I'm going to go ahead and take the tube out, and I'm going to go ahead and make a reading. Now I'm going to use the n equals five scale, which is on the other side, and you can see that it, it's it's right about 0.2 percent. Now 0.2 percent is about 2,000 parts per million. So when we uh, 
are using detector tubes, we have to keep in mind the unit of measure that we're using. Now, sometimes you can get tubes in part per million. This particular tube is looking at a higher concentration. Remember, 1% of any gas is 10,000 ppm. So at point two, that I know that that's about 2,000. Now I exhaled on it. To do that, normal ambient air in an office that's got good ventilation is going to be between 400 to 1,000 ppm. Um, so I did spike it a little bit, but I did want to show you that. So the tube is very, very good, easy to read. Now, the CO2 is a very simple tube. We can tell that by because there's n only one indicating and one uh, measurement range uh, on that tube. Some tubes have different colors. This one here is an alcohol tube, ethanol. So this ethanol tube uh, would be used for the presence of ethanol. But what you'll find is a lot of these tubes have cross sensitivities to other alcohols. So I can use an ethanol tube for methanol, isopropanol, um, and, and, and know that if I'm looking just for the presence of alcohols, I would get a hit on this. Now, one interesting thing about this particular tube, if I were to use a PID and I'm looking for methanol, let's just say, well, PIDs use lamp energies to actually detect the presence of a gas or not. 10.6 lamps, electron volt lamps used in most PIDs, don't have enough energy to see methanol. They do see ethanol and they do see is isopropyl alcohol or IPA. They, do can, they can see that. But when we get into methanol, it is blind to it. So you may walk around with a, a PID such as this Mini Ray 3000 or others and get no hits in the presence of something that's actually there. So in the case of hazmat or a plant, you want to know what you have so detector tubes come in handy. So I'm gonna go ahead and show this. I don't know if you've come in a little bit on the, on the video here. I'm gonna open up, this is a big jar of methanol. And I'm gonna go ahead and pull a sample using our PID just to demonstrate that there is no hit from methanol on a 10.6 lamp. And certainly within 10 to 12 seconds, we have a reading on our PID. And you can see there's no response, as we would suspect. That's normal. But if I take this ethyl alcohol tube and I just follow the instructions, putting the arrow into the quick draw pump, pull a sample, you will see a quick and, and very, very distinct stain, color stain. And alcohols will turn this red indicating layer to a greenish brown. Now, I just did one pump stroke. And again, I'm just doing this for, for really qualitative purposes. I don't expect to know what the concentration is in there, but you can certainly see that color change that took place here. So by using detector tubes along with a PID helps us find things that the PID is, is limited in. And, and this is something that we teach all the time, but there's limitations to all types of instrumentation that we use for gas vapor de determination and risk analysis. And if we're not looking at the limitations of instrumentation and using supplemental types of detection means like detector tubes, you know, you're really gonna be missing out on, on potential exposures and maybe some uh, increase your hazard and your risk. So we wanna make sure we do that. So this is, this is the, uh, the quick draw pump. Now what's kind of neat about um, Unifis, they have a secondary pump, and this is called the Gas Tester 2. I kind of like the Gas Tester 2. And the, what the Gas Tester, I'm going to reuse this alcohol tube. It works kind of the same way. We're going to insert it into the pump following the direction of the, the arrow, airflow. And what you do with this is you just compress down on a table. Now it's, it's loaded, it's ready to go. And all I have to do is hit this red button, and it will then pull in 100 milliliters. I'm gonna go back up to this thing and I'm gonna come in a little closer. I hit that button and it's slowly pulling that sample in. There is an end of flow indicator here that will let me know when that 100 milliliters is completely uh, pulled through. Actually, it's down here. And when it's completely green, that's 100 milliliters. I'm gonna do it again, compress, and I will see that end of flow indicator turn green when it's completely finished. So what we're seeing here is different methods. I kind of pulled away a little too quick. I wanna keep you on this video for too long, 
but you can see I'm getting a complete stain. Now this is 100% volume methane, methanol I'm giving it. So certainly we're gonna get high concentrations and you can see how that tube is, is responding accordingly. Okay, we're green, the end of flow is done. And if I were using this in a ambient way, I would take the number of pump strokes, number 10, do my 10 and then do my reading. Now, a lot of times people go, well, how do I do the reading? Well, you want to go the farthest length of stain or color. Sometimes you'll get it kind of split up a little bit. You want to go to the farthest length of stain, take your reading, and that would be your most uh, probably safe uh, number you want to use. Some industrial hygienists will take the low and the high, depending on the color stain, and to an average. That's fine, too. Again, plus or minus accuracy of these tubes, anywhere between plus or minus 25% at about uh, you know 60 to 80% relative confidence. So tubes are really good. I use them more for, is there something there or is there not something there? And that's where tubes can come in handy. Other manufacturers, such as this one here, this is Gas Tech. Gas Tech uses a syringe style. And syringe style is a little bit smaller, skinnier tube. This one happens to be an ammonia tube. I'm gonna go ahead and break it. It's got a, a breaker right on the, in the pump itself. Every time I pull back on this, uh, on this uh, syringe, I'm pulling a 100 milliliter sample, just like what we did with the quick draw and the, and the gas tester too. And if you're using Drager, it's the same. Every time we, we compress a Drager, it's 100 milliliters. But we're not gonna use Drager anymore. We're gonna use a much better, simpler system. So in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and line this up. This is a an ammonia tube, and this ammonia tube has an arrow, and it says, put me into the pump this way. Over here, I'm gonna open up a little vial of ammonia. And all I have to do now is just pull the syringe. Whoa, and I went a little too close, but did you notice how quick that was? Now, that just shows that, obviously, I'm 100% ammonia, but I wanted to show you how quickly that took place. So again, if we're looking for ambient levels, um, you're, gonna, you're not gonna get that kind of a reaction, hopefully not. But if you do, it's very, very quick. It went from pink to now completely stained, like a yellowish color. So that was a real quick reaction to a uh, ammonia uh, with a syringe pump. So gas tech tubes uses a syringe. Ray Systems uses a syringe. Not a problem. It does t require two hands, although they do have a device you can put on here, kind of similar to the gas tester too. You load it and then you just push a button. So one hand operation is uh, available for that. And again, we will take trigger pumps in trade. You get a brand new gas tech pump with a purchase of 10 boxes of tubes or more, and we'll work with you on that. Also, when you deal with AFC International, we include training and support. So not only are we gonna provide you the products, we're gonna teach you how to use them, use the, show you the differences, where they're maybe gonna help you in uh, risk analysis in the field. We also will have uh, hazmat tube kits available and come out and do training. And we have regional classes uh, throughout the year. So we'll stay tuned for that. We'll let you know about that. Um, so Jim Sinesco for AFC International. Give us a call, 800-952-3293. If we can answer any questions, go to our website. We're also on Facebook. And we'll, you'll probably see this video on YouTube eventually as well. So thank you for your business. Thank you for all your help and support over the years. Uh, gosh, I think we're going into our, almost our 30th year. I think we're getting pretty close. We're really proud of that. Pam Sinesco, been running this company and doing a great job for all these years. So we say thank you very much. Give us a call. I'd love to work with you. Thank you.